Well, good evening and a very warm welcome to our service of candlelit carols here at Fitzwilliam College Chapel. Very well, warm welcome to the choir gathered here this evening at distance and uh, a warm welcome to those watching uh, on, the on the stream and on the recording. It's uh, hard for us to believe that out there in the real world it's November because here we're feeling very festive as Bridgmas is upon us and so tonight we have a whistle-stop tour through Advent and into Christmas and we celebrate by uh, singing carols and hearing readings. So now hear the traditional bidding prayer. Beloved in Christ, we prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels, in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this place glad with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of this world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build and especially in the dominions of our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth within this university and city of Cambridge and in our Fitzwilliam College. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us at this time remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick in body and in mind, and them that mourn the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ hath taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please sit to hear the first lesson. People that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them have the, line, have the light shrined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God.
And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And in his kingdom there shall be no end. Then he said unto Mary, he said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing how I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word, and the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God.
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God. No. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in their field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Thanks be to God.
Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are coming to worship him. When Herod the king had heard of these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people of Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream, that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Thanks be to God.
May I speak in the name of the Word made flesh, the Word who reveals light and life. Amen. Please be seated. While shepherds watch their flocks by helicopter in Utah this week, during a count of bighorn sheep, they discovered a 10-foot metallic so-called monolith protruding from the hard ground, alone in the middle of the desert. Investigations of satellite imagery suggest that it wasn't there before 2016. This strange object is reminiscent of a scene from Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, but of course it's around 15 years too late for that. O magnum mysterium! Is this object from another space and time? From another intelligence beyond our solar system? Have we been invaded? The prologue of John's Gospel, our final reading, which we will hear shortly, puts words to what the existentialist philosopher Soren Kierkegaard called the absolute paradox that God, outside space and time, became God in time as the God-man, Jesus Christ. John's Gospel says, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John also writes that this Word made flesh is the true light which lighteth everyone that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. The great mystery of this enfleshing, this incarnation of God, is not of the order of the Utah monolith, which is a mystery of whence, and by whom, and how, and probably most importantly, why. The great mystery of the incarnation is the absolute paradox which defies human reason and comprehension. The paradox of the transcendent, unchanging, infinite God becoming imminent, particular, one of us. And this mystery is a mystery that reveals. The light coming into the world is not like the arrival of a candle, or indeed a monolith, an object that moves from one place to another that we can look upon. It is more like the arrival of the light by which we see the truth of everything. We look into this light to understand its shining. We are overwhelmed by light and cannot see. But the light of God come into the world reveals everything to us, including ourselves. The light of God, the light of the glory of God, full of grace and truth, reveals that God is for us and God is with us. God is for us. Human life is seen to have ultimate worth and dignity. Every life, from the child of an unmarried girl and soon-to-be refugee in first-century Palestine, to the displaced refugees and asylum seekers of whom there are more than ever today. Every life has the utmost value. In coming as one of us, God reveals his love for us. As John later writes, God came in flesh as Jesus because God so loved the world. God for us is love. That God is with us is the message of good tidings, of great joy for all people, which we heard of earlier. This is hope, and it's hope not just as a future hope, but a hope in this present darkness, in the darkness of pandemic, pandemics of disease, pandemics of isolation, of loneliness, of distress. God is with us. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not comprehended it. This season of Advent, may we anticipate the dawning light, the light which has come into the world and reveals, in magnificent mystery, the truth that God is with us, and God, God is for us. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt only us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
I give the final blessing, I want to say an uh, enormous thank you to everybody who's been involved in the services that we've uh, had this afternoon, to the readers who've come and read for us so beautifully, and uh, especially to the wonderful choir gathered before me, and to our music director, Catherine Groom, and to our organ scholars. Thank you so much for all the hard work that's gone into uh, your wonderful, um, wonderful work. Much appreciated. Um, it's also not really my place to do this, but I uh, want to acknowledge that uh, this has been a hard term and uh, say an enormous well done to all the students who have met the challenges and limitations of this term with great fortitude and resilience and perseverance and good humor. And uh, we've got by and you've done really well. And I know we're not quite at the end and there's some essay deadlines, no doubt, still to come. But uh, to say well done for getting through a difficult term and uh, to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas when it does eventually come. And so, the final blessing. Almighty God, bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life, and unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen.